The following program is a production of Pioneer Public Television. In this episode of Postcards... We all can learn from history and the importance of World War II and all the men and women who served, fought, and died for the freedoms that we have today. I think that's a favorite part of this museum for me is the fact that our entire family's involved. It's what I like the most. And these guys are making seven-year-old airplanes actually fly and run. So it's a big deal. So it's a lot of fun. This program on Pioneer Public Television is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the Vote of the People of Minnesota on November 4, 2008. Additional support provided by Mark and Margaret Yakel Julien in honor of Shalom Hill Farm, a nonprofit rural education retreat center in a beautiful prairie setting near Wyndham in southwestern Minnesota. ShalomHillFarm.org. The Arrowwood Resort and Conference Center. Your ideal choice for Minnesota resorts offering luxury townhomes, 18 holes of golf, Darling Reflection Spa, Big Splash Water Park, and much more. Alexandria, Minnesota, a relaxing vacation or great location for an event. Explore Alex.com. Easy to get to, hard to leave. These war planes invite you. They're not designed to be casual weekend flyers. If something goes wrong, you've got to be prepared to handle the, the situation at hand because they're a fighting platform. They're not a, a Sunday afternoon sedan. So you got to be ready for an event that might get your heart pumping pretty good. And it happens with these aircraft because they're 70 years old. They have more power. They're, uh, they have a lot of history to them, so you're very appreciative to get to fly them. They smoke a lot. They sound good, and uh, for the most part, they're fast, so it's a lot of fun. We always run out to the runway because you never know. That might be the last time that airplane flies or uh, something like that. It, it, uh, it's always a thrill to see something that, that old that someone produced by hand back in the day. Fagan Fighters World War II Museum consists of three hangars and a Quonset hut and a control tower. The first building you'd go to we call our trainer hangar and you will find trainer aircraft and our Waco glider, which takes up a huge space in there, very rare. The new hangar, which not done yet, is the bomber hangar. That'll have radial aircraft, the bomber, the wildcat, and it will also have two areas for exhibits. There are wings on either side of the hangar portion. And the building we're in right now, we refer to as a fighter hangar, which houses the fighter aircraft and various ground vehicles and uh, the sculpture in the library.
we have murals on the walls here that depict probably the airplane in front or the vehicle in front of it. These airplanes go to shows and, you know, they're gone occasionally. And we thought, well, if we have a good representation of the airplane on the wall when people come, if the airplane's gone, at least they know what is there. And it helps tell the story. We have Quonset Hut, which depicts the 357th fighter group of which Colonel Bud Anderson is honored there. We have a bronze of him, and the Quonset Hut is like Lyston Field, England, where he was stationed, along with the control tower, which is built according to World War II specs. The bronze sculptures that you see in our museum were done by Fred Hoppy of Nebraska. And uh, he had uh, and does have a museum in Branson, Missouri that we visited and uh, really liked what we saw and found out we could get him to do ours as well. So, so we did and uh, actually the first one off the Higgins boat that you see in our museum is Ray Fagan. My father got drafted, he got drafted into the U.S. Army and in infantry. And when he arrived in England, it was all in preparation for the big day, D-Day. So they practiced and uh, trained for the invasion. He did participate in Utah Beach he was in the first wave for the 4th Infantry Division. And then from there, my dad participated, went across France, participated in liberation of Paris. A lot of people thought that was pretty easy, but it was a very tough battle also. My dad told me once, the worst, the worst battle for he was involved in was the Battle of the Bulge. He said, that was terrible. And that's where he eventually got sent to the hospital. That was... Uh, his, his toughest time during the war. So he, he received three battle stars for invasion, Normandy invasion, Utah Beach, liberation of Paris, and then Battle of the Bulge. My grandpa start was the first pilot in our family and, and he passed the, the bug on to my dad and on to myself and I enjoy it. And uh, it, it's just a lot of fun to be able to get up in the air and fly the different types of airplanes. My wife Diane and oldest son Aaron and the youngest son Evan, we were very close to my father. Everybody wanted to support this effort. And then we thought, well, maybe we should have a, create a little museum here. And it seemed like everybody picked up in certain different areas. Aaron loves the vehicles, anything on wheels and, and equipment and guns and the trucks, everything to do on the transportation side of the war effort. That's what Aaron enjoys and that's what he's been collecting. So I'm the only one in the family that doesn't fly and I'm kind of a motorhead so I enjoy the vehicles and I like doing the research to make sure that the vehicles are the way they rolled off the factory assembly line and then try to do research on the numbers uh, of the military vehicles so they are as accurate as possible. Evan is kind of follow born as my footsteps. He's airplane crazy guy. And he is also the chief pilot of our museum. He flies everything here, which is amazing. A lot of people learn how to fly maybe one more bird, but he's flying, he flies them all. And my wife Diane, of course, she runs a museum. She's in charge of getting, working with you folks and everybody else that's interested. So she's responsible for a lot of the stuff you see here and why it looks why it looks. My mom is the big organizer of our group. She heads up a lot of stuff and my dad is a good pilot and makes a lot of stuff happen and, 
and my brother handles all the ground vehicles and organizes and we all do something different and we take care of different things and we all enjoy the overall goal and, and it's just something we enjoy together. I think that's a favorite part of this museum for me is the fact that our entire family's involved. It um, started out of course with our with Ray Fagan, Ron's dad, and uh, Ron and I and our sons and now their wives and children are also involved and it, it really is a unifying thing for us. It's, it's what I like the most. The fact that we are located in Granite Falls, Minnesota has not been a detriment in any way for visitors. People come here from all over and uh, seem to enjoy the small community that we're in. We're lucky we have a great hotel close. We've got a very accommodating small town here that enjoy visitors. I've heard people from Minneapolis say, well, why would you build a museum in Granite Falls, Minnesota, out in the middle of nowhere? Well, guess what? You build it, they'll come, and that's the true story. We all can learn from history and the importance of World War II and all the men and women who served, fought, and died for the freedoms that we have today. We need to learn by that and um, appreciate everything that the Fagan family has put out here in the museum. So it's an excellent learning tool for people of all ages. The vehicles help tell part of the story and, you know, kids can go back and this new generations and look back at the uh, pictures and reading about the history in World War II and they can go out and actually touch these vehicles and see what the greatest generation used in the largest conflict on earth. Um, so I think it, it's, it's just good and then you should never forget what um, you know, our grandparents and people's you know, ancestors basically did for us and for our freedoms here. And it's just kind of preserving that history is important. The experience of being involved in this museum has really been a good one. It's uh, broadened my horizons because uh, getting to know some of these older people and seeing how well they relate to the very youngest of our groups. Um, there's lessons to be learned and stories to be told that, that uh, it has just been a great experience for me. Besides our, our museum, we have Fagan Fighters Restoration, and we specialize in uh, restoring P-40, Curtis Wright P-40 fighter planes. Our shop has got a great reputation, Fagan Fighters Restoration, usually, well, not usually, every time that we finish a project, we have one grand champion. Our shop is known for probably one of the best restoration shops in the, in the world, and we're very proud of our workforce. We have a lot of talented people that work here. They're like artists. They all have a special knack. I mean, if you have to be an artist to build, restore some of this stuff, because we receive it in pretty poor condition. It's been laying out on the tundra for 60, 50 years, and we drag them in and rebuild them. We're in our maintenance shop here right now, and this is where we do the yearly annuals on the aircraft, and we assemble the completed aircraft that after restoration in the shop over there. We assemble them here, put the wings on the fuselage and engines. And these folks here are uh, doing maintenance and an annual and do some repair on this Wildcat here. And these guys are making seven-year-old airplanes actually fly and run, so it's a big deal. So it's a lot of fun. We're chasing a wiring problem that we had earlier. We did some uh, rewiring on this, so uh, we're just gaining access to this side of the wiring that's going on in the cockpit right now. So I'd say the challenging part is uh, deciphering 
70-year-old manuals and maintenance manuals and uh, publications and stuff like that. I'm used to working on uh, you know, F-16s, newer airplanes, so this is definitely an you know, interesting challenge for me, but I'm up for it. So. I'm simply inspecting. I'm looking for uh, hardware, loose hardware, safety wire. Uh, everything on airplanes is safety so it doesn't vibrate off and rattle, rattle loose. I worked in general aviation for, uh, what was it, four years, three years? And uh, that gave me great knowledge, but uh, just the sense of keeping you know, history alive, the purpose of being here, and uh, yeah, being able to have the community you know, have this in our local area, it's a great purpose to come to work every day. You can find shops like this in California or on the East Coast, but uh, in the Midwest here, we're, we're really limited on, on really just great things like this going on. And so what the Fagans have done here is just amazing to have something that people don't have to drive a thousand miles to get to, you know, from the Midwest. They can, they can just, you know, drive a hundred miles and be here and check out some amazing aircraft. One thing that's very unique about our museum, everything runs and flies. A lot of museums, they get parked in a museum and nobody ever hears them run or they, they don't fly anymore. So it's important that you see the shop where we maintain them, keeping them in the air and our staff. And then our fabrication shop where the guys work and restore these things. Like I say, these guys are artists and they're working off World War II blueprints, you know, and they're, the accuracy is, they're perfect. I mean, they're manual. when they have to make new parts or restore old parts, they, they work off the original blueprints from 70 years ago, and it's almost better than factory, the way they rolled out. They do a great job. My name's Jason Dunn. I'm the general manager of the Fagan Fighters restoration shop. I uh, oversee all the maintenance and restoration projects. For a lot of the guys that work here, um, aviation has been part of their life growing up. They've been around it, um, either they're parents or somebody they know and for them to come to work to a, in a shop like this is is kind of that dream. I like the history of the airplanes here, the World War II. Um, the uniqueness of the World War II restoration shop in the Midwest, there's not a whole lot of that around. Uh, I grew up right around here. I, was, I lived just a few miles from the airport so I would often see Ron flying his P-51 around at a young age and that kind of sparked my interest and I decided to go into aviation maintenance and end up with a job here. I hear on a daily basis of how lucky I am to have this job and people come through here and, and just absolutely love seeing this stuff so it's, it's yeah it's very important. We're getting there. Oh, yeah. This would be considered the sheet metal shop. Um, any kind of sheet metal fabrication that's done here. Uh, mostly making um, new parts from uh, molds from the old old parts. We we take the old pieces and a lot, most of the time they're not usable, but they're still good enough to make patterns off of. And uh, we do that and we produce new parts. A lot of the equipment that we use is actually old equipment, like from the 40s and 50s, and it pretty much replicates the way they would have done it back then. Um, some of the stuff that they did we still have no idea how they did it and we always talk about it'd be fun to go back into one of the old factories and just see how they did some of it because most of that's just gotten lost through the years and we have you know it's a lot of what we do here is tri by trial and error so um, we do the best we can and uh, that's the way it is. This is uh, basically the exact replica. Uh, we take a lot of the parts off the original wing and hammer them flat, make templates and uh, new aluminum, reprodu reproduce them and uh, put them in the wings. It's, uh, it's built just the same way as it was done in the 40s um, off of original blueprints from the Smithsonian. Um, there's maybe, what, 10% original pieces? In this one, yeah. yeah. I know the original, there's three original pieces. Here's where the uh, machine guns would mount, and along with the stainless steel gun chutes, we'd kind of just covered up more of them. But uh, 
Other than that, a lot of stuff gets reproduced by hand. Of course, no one you can't call up Walmart and say, yeah, we need two ribs for a P40. No one's got any of this stuff on hand, so a lot of it is uh, handmade, I guess. Uh, this original goal is just as original as it gets. Uh, it was obviously crashed somewhere and someone dragged it behind their house and or bought it from someone and but uh, it, it gets used strictly as patterns you can see that it's been somewhere in a salty environment with a corrosion there is no pieces in here that are airworthy uh, so what we do you can see something has been cut out of here we've taken something out and a hard to get piece or something that's really hard to make and put it on the bench and either hammered it flat or basically copied it uh, it's a, as a 3D blueprint. So what we're doing here is just kind of keeping history alive because uh, most of the stuff we're working with uh, from original parts is 70 years old. And when we get this wing done, for instance, um, who knows how long it'll be around and it, it'll just kind of keep, keep the ball rolling as far as the history of, of the airplanes and, and how we won the war. I guess the biggest thing for me is just the history. I, uh, I have two little girls and I feel like the history of World War II is kind of lost on, on the generations that are growing up now. And so to be able to preserve this is just really special. And you know, I tell people that come through here all the time, you can tell a kid in a classroom something 10 times and he might remember it, but you give him a plane that he can actually touch and ask questions about and he'll remember for the rest of his life and so that's a big part of it for me. They don't make the aluminum airplanes they don't really make them this way anymore at all it's turning into composite carbon fiber a lot of that and uh, I don't know, just uh, almost feels like you're in a time machine when you come work here with the original stuff and we've got a lot of original unusable parts but they're still someone put that together 70 years ago and uh, it's, I don't know, it's pretty pretty fun to work with. It's interesting to see I guess uh, when the old guys that actually flew these airplanes or built them or maintained them come through and uh, they're, they oh yeah I remember putting that together or telling you telling you how the airplanes flew I guess that that makes it worth coming to work here. It's uh, they're still wake up, can't believe we get paid to do this, play with the uh, old airplanes basically. You have to give the Fagan family a lot of credit because um, they've really gone above and beyond as far as um, preserving, you know, his, a part of history here uh, and particularly what they do with the, the World War II vets when they come in um, because they're not going to be around a whole lot longer. Um, that's sad to say, but most of them are gone already. And so they're, they're interviewing them and preserving um, just a part of the past. You meet a lot of neat people. You meet a lot of uh, retired military and their families. And it's kind of a, it's a humbling experience. Well, I just, I'm grateful to be a part of it, and uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's most fun probably to see people's reactions to walking through and, or seeing stuff start up. Um, I guess we like the fact that everything does operate and, and isn't just static. So I think people like most when you fire stuff up, take off or drive them forward, and you know, they get to see them operate. So it's kind of living history. Created something here that that people are enjoying. They're coming to seek out history and learn learn history and lessons. 
and and they have a yearning to want to know. They really do. You would be surprised. They want to know what happened during the war. And a lot of them come here not knowing what happened, but they've heard from friends, you've got to go see this museum and see what's there and hear about everything that happened during the war. Some people from, from uh, France, they come to the United States for a vacation and they pulled in here in a rented motorhome. They had three stops they wanted to make in the United States. One was Yellowstone, two was Fagan Fighters World War II Museum, and New York City. That was on their agenda. And so, that's great. We are preserving the history in this museum it didn't start out at this level, but it is, it's become a passion. It kind of gets in your blood, and we've been collecting as we go along here, and we've gone all over the United States trying to add certain things to our collection. And we're very passionate about this, and we will continue on. The museum that my folks put together, I, I think, gives people the opportunity to see a lot of the artifacts and, and vehicles and airplanes from World War II all in one area. And I think it gives a lot of people from the greatest generation a chance to come out and be in their era and, and see things as they were in the day when they were young and, and using them for what their job was at the time. And um, it also gives us a chance to connect with the younger kids who may not have the connection to the greatest generation in the World War II era. So educating the kids who don't know what Pearl Harbor is or don't know what D-Day was. It gives them a chance to understand what happened and why we're kind of here. Visit Pioneer.org for more information on postcards and other Pioneer productions. This program on Pioneer Public Television is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008. Additional support provided by Mark and Margaret Yakel Julien in honor of Shalom Hill Farm, a nonprofit rural education retreat center in a beautiful prairie setting near Wyndham in southwestern Minnesota. ShalomHillFarm.org. The Arrowwood Resort and Conference Center. Your ideal choice for Minnesota resorts offering luxury townhomes, 18 holes of golf, Darling Reflection Spa, Big Splash Water Park, and much more. Alexandria, Minnesota, a relaxing vacation or great location for an event. Explore Alex.com. Easy to get to, hard to leave. <laughs>